Hello and welcome. In this class, we'll configure a DHCP server. So we'll go with the process, and now we'll have a router that will be able to provide IP addresses to our users in our local area network. So let's see how that is going to look like in our topology. So now I have a device, the one that we have configured as a DHCP client in the previous class, and that device is connected to the cloud, that is basically my home network. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a switch. So if we go to all the devices here, you can see that there is a default Ethernet switch here on GNS3, and we are simply going to add some VPCs. So those virtual PCs, so I will add uh, two of them that will be representing our users. And now we'll simply connect a cable from that router. I will use Ether2 to the switch. And then from the switch, I will connect a cable to every computer. So the idea is that we are going to have a DHCP server running on Ether2. And then those two devices will be able to get an IP from our DHCP server. So first of all, we need to set a network. So I'm going to use one network. And the network is going to be 192.168.20.24. So that's the network that I'm going to use in my local area network. And I'm going to use the first usable IP on Ether2. That's going to be 192.168.21.24. So let's see first what is required to configure the DHCP server and what the purpose of that DHCP server and where we'll come back to GNS3. The whole point is that the DHCP server is going to dynamically assign IPs to those devices. We're going to configure the DHCP server on the interface where we are expecting those clients. There are two different ways to configure a DHCP server. One is via a manual configuration, and the second one is using a wizard. If we go with the manual configuration, we have those four steps. So the first one is that we need to add an IP on the interface. The second one, we are going to create a pool of IPs. So basically, that IP pool is going to have all the IPs that will be available and that can be allocated to the clients. After that, we're going to create the network that basically is the structure that is going to have the settings that will be pushed to the clients. And then we are going to create the server itself that basically is going to be mapping the previous structure that we have configured. The second process or the second method to configure a DHCP server is by using a wizard. We are simply going to click on a DHCP setup wizard, and then that is going to be asking for information and it's going to build all the structures dynamically. So we learn those two processes because it's important to understand what is happening behind the scenes. If I use the wizard, we are simply going to be clicking next, 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 but actually we don't know what exactly is happening. With the manual process, you will see everything and after you are familiar with that process, then we can simply use the wizard. And if in the future you need to troubleshoot any DHCP problem, then you know where every structure is going to be located. So let's go to our configuration. And we'll start with the manual process. So we can see that the first step is to add an IP on the interface. So we'll go one by one in those steps. So now here we have this router, the interface that we are going to use is Ether2. So I need to assign an IP on Ether2. So I will go to the Winbox. So we have the Winbox for that device here. To assign an IP, we are going to go to IP and then Addresses. And we are going to click on the plus button. And then here, the IP that we are going to set is 192.168.2.1.24. So we're using the first host IP from that network. And then we need to pick the interface that is going to be Ether2. You can see that I'm not typing the network because if we are adding an IP and the subnet mask, then RouterOS is smart enough 
to know what is the network address and it's going to calculate that value. For example, if I click apply, you can see that the router OS is adding that value because it has all the information that it required to calculate that. So we don't need to type that value manually. So now I can simply click OK. So now I have the step one completed. So I have the IP on the interface. The next step is to create an IP pool. So basically the IP pool is the structure that is going to have all the IPs that can be allocated to the client. So if we're using the network 192.168.20.24, we have available the IP from 2 all the way up to 254. But let's say that we don't want to use the full range available. We're just going to use the IPs from 100 to 199. So let's create that pool. To do that, we're going to go to IP and then pool. So let's see that in the router. If I come here to the router, I will go to IP and then pool. You can see that there is no pool by default in that CHR and then I will add a new pool and this is going to be LAN dash pool addresses. Here we are going to add a range so I'm going to say the start value is going to be 192.168.2.100 dash and then we are going to set the max IP. 192.168.2.199 So this is the initial value and this is the last IP in that range. Now I can click apply and OK. And now we have the step number two. We have created the IP pool. Step three, we need to create a network. So the network is basically going to have, for example, the gateway that is going to be sent to the clients. It's also going to have the DNS servers that will be sending, the NTP server, and so on and so forth. So basically, the network is the structure where we are going to define what information will be sent to the clients. To create the network, we are going to go to IP, THCP server, and then to the network tab. So let's go now. Here in the router, I will go to IP, THCP server, and then you have the network tab. So you can see that this is empty. So I will add a new entry. And here, this address is going to be the network address. So if you are not sure about the network address, you can simply check under addresses. And you can see here on the network column that the network address is 192.168.20. So I will simply copy that value. And also you have to copy the subnet mask. So in this case it's a slash 24. So I will copy the network address slash 24. Then the gateway. So what's the information that we need to send to the user? So what's the gateway that the user will receive? So the gateway is going to be the IP on the interface in that router. So if I check my topology, if for example that device needs to send traffic to internet, those devices will send the traffic to the IP here. So in that case it's 192.168.2.1. So that's the gateway that we need to push to the clients. So I'm going to say gateway is going to be 192.168.2.1. And then the net mask is 24, because we have 24 bits. And then here we are going to add some additional options. For example, DNS servers. I'm going to send the Google's DNS. We can send more than one. So I can send also the Cloudflare DNS. You can see that you can add as many as you want. So in my case, I will add only two. If you are in a domain-based network, so you are using Active Directory or Windows Server, you can also send the domain here. If you have NTP servers, you can send that information there, and so on and so forth. So you can see that there are several options. For this lab, I will be sending only the gateway, NetMask, and DNS servers. So with that in place, we can simply click OK. And now we have the network that is ready. And we're missing just one step, and that is the server itself. So we need to create the server. If I go back, 
I will go to IP, the HCP server, and then we'll go here to the ACP, and then we'll add a server. So it's going to be server for ether2, for example, the name is completely up to you. The important field here is the interface. So where is that server going to be running on? So in this case, that's ether2. So I'm going to select ether2. Here we are going to select the list time. You can see that by default that is 10 minutes. But if you want to add, uh, for example, 10 hours, I can say 10 zero minutes and zero seconds. So this is for hours, minutes, and seconds. And then here the address pool. We need to tell the server what's the pool that is going to use to allocate IP addresses. So if I expand the list, you can see that I see the LAN pool that we have created before on this step number two. So I will select that LAN pool. Basically, that's all that we need. So now I will click apply. And OK. So now we have created the IP, we have the pool, we have the network, and we have the server. All the manual configuration is ready. So that means that at this point, those PCs will be able to get an IP from that server. So let's go to GNS3. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to capture packets on that link. So I will place my mouse over the link. I will right click, and you can see here a start capture. So I will start capturing packets. I will say OK. And this is going to launch Wireshark. So you can see that Wireshark is going to be capturing packets in that link. So I will filter those packets only for the HCP. So I will type the HCP here on the filter. I will press Enter. And now this is going to be waiting for the ACP packet. So I will go to GNS3 again. I will start that PC. And now we have a console connection to that device. And we can simply say IP DHCP. And if we press Enter, you can see that that device is going through the DORA process. So discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement. And now that device got an IP, and the IP is 192.168.199.24. And the gateway is 2.1. So basically, this is working. So we have the DACP server sending IPs to the client. So if I say show IP, you can see here that also that device got the DNS servers, has the gateway information, the IP, and basically everything is working fine. If I go to the to Wireshark, you can see that Wireshark captured all those DHCP packets. So we have the Discover over here, going from 68 to 67. And finally, we have the acknowledgement that basically is saying the IP is 2199. And this is the DHCP process that has been performed between this, the server and that client. If I go with the second device here, I will go to the console and I will say IP DHCP. So now that device is looking for a DHCP server in that broadcast domain. And you can see that that device got an IP and that is 198. So you can see that the server is using the max IP first, then the second max IP at the next one, and so on and so forth. So this is the way how MyRotic is going to deliver IP addresses. So we have the minimum value. We have the max value. We have all those IPs available in the pool. So that is going to be the first IP to deliver. Once that IP has been delivered, it's going to go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, and so on and so forth. So it's always going to start with the max value, and it's going to end with the mean value. So now we have a server that is providing IP addresses to users. So look how you know where is every instructor, the IP pool, the network, and the server. In our next class, we'll learn how to use the wizard. The process is going to be pretty fast, but we're not going to see where every instructor is going to be created. That's quite important to 
go with the manual process first and once you are familiar with that you can simply use the wizard in your future deployments. Thank you and I see you in the next class.